se enmarca dentro de la Semana de la Ciencia y eh, es organizada por la Facultad de Ciencias y por el Grupo de Investigación Ciencia, Razón y Fe, CRIF de la Universidad de Navarra. Como ven, vamos a hablar del de aniversario de los 80 años de la teoría del Big Bang. Hay también una exposición fotográfica en la quinta planta que ha comenzado hace unos días. La verdad es que les invito a, a darse una vuelta para observar una exposición que, que da una idea muy buena de este aniversario. Tenemos el gusto, para mí es un placer, auténticamente un placer, presentar al profesor Dominique Lambert, que es, pertenece al Departamento de Ciencias y es también director del Departamento de Filosofía de la Universidad de Danur, en el sur de Bélgica. Eh, voy a dar algún dato para que puedan identificar la, la valía de este profesor, es corresponsable del Grupo de Aplicaciones Matemáticas a las Ciencias del Cosmos, es también académico del Centro de Estudios de Ciencias y Filosofía en Namur, es miembro del Centro de Sistemas Complejos, eh, tiene un doble doctorado en Física y en Filosofía, y su actual dominio de interés va desde la Física Teórica, desde la Cosmología Teórica a la Filosofía de la Ciencia. Si alguno de ustedes tiene la, el deseo, la paciencia de entrar en su página web personal, hay una zona muy interesante que son los proyectos en curso. Yo he echado un vistazo y, por ejemplo, eh, está trabajando el profesor Lambert en los vínculos entre metafísica y cosmología contemporánea. O, por ejemplo, está trabajando sobre el alcance ontológico de las matemáticas. Pero realmente estamos ante un profesor que... Eh, aúna en su vida intelectual muchos ámbitos de la ciencia, de la ciencia experimental y también de la filosofía, incluso de la teología. Estamos ante un verdadero profesor interdisciplinar, podríamos decir. Les comento también algunos cargos que, que ha ejercido o ejerce el profesor Lambert. Ha sido vicepresidente de la Sociedad Belga de Lógica y Filosofía de la Ciencia, es miembro ordinario de la Sociedad de las Artes y de las Ciencias de la Ciudad Polaca de Lodz, es miembro del Institut de Guerres Gesellschaft für Interdisciplinaire Forschung. Es miembro de la Academia Europea de las Ciencias, las Artes y las Letras en París. Es coordinador del Comité Editorial de la Revue de Questions Scientifique. Es miembro de la Academia de Ciencias de Bélgica. Es consultor del Pontificio Consejo de la Cultura. Y también a lo largo de su vida académica ha recibido numerosas distinciones. Por ejemplo, ha recibido en 1999 el premio de la Fundación George Lemaitre, de quien nos va a hablar hoy, y en el año 2000 el premio de la European Society for the Study of Sciences and Theology. Por supuesto, no me voy a detener a enumerar sus publicaciones, tiene más de 150 contribuciones, entre libros, artículos científicos, contribuciones a, a obras colectivas, pero sí que les puedo decir que es uno de los principales conocedores de George Lemaitre, de itinerario intelectual y también espiritual de este fundador de la teoría del Big Bang. También les puedo decir, me parece que hay pocas personas con el bagaje interdisciplinar del profesor Dominique Lambert. Por eso me parece que es una suerte y sobre todo un honor para nosotros acogerle hoy aquí y escuchar su conferencia. So, thank you. Thank you very much for your First of all, I want to thank you very much for the invitation and for this kind introduction. Thank you. But the aim of my talk is to, to give a, a survey of the life and the scientific work of uh, Georges Lemaitre, the, the father of Big Bang Theory. In fact, Georges Lemaitre, here in 19 34, was born in uh, the Belgian industrial town of Charleroi in uh, 1894 and after secondary school in a Jesuit college he attended the Catholic University of Louvain to be trained as a mine engineer. But after three years the First World War stopped his project. During the war Le Maître served as a volunteer in both infantry and artillery and 
he never became an officer because he dared to correct the ballistic computation of his chief. And this, the letter refused that he <laughs> became a, an officer for this reason. And after the war, he changed and, completely, and completed in only one year a master in mathematics, in physics, with a thesis under the supervision of the famous mathematician uh, and friend of Adamar, Charles de la Vallée Poussin, a specialist of prime number theory. And during this year, in 1919, uh, he also studied philosophy, mainly the philosophy of Aristotle and St. Thomas, Thomas Aquinas, in the institute founded by Cardinal Mercier in Louvain. After, after that, he entered the seminary of Malin in order to become a Catholic priest. During this period, 1920-1923, uh, Cardinal Mercier gave him a special permission to continue to study physics in the seminary. In fact, he read Einstein's papers on general relativity and many publications of, the, of Professor uh, Theophile uh, de Donder, who was a Belgian specialist of general uh, relativity. And at the end of his ecclesiastical studies, he, uh, Le Maître became a specialist of general relativity. And he produced a manuscript entitled La Physique d'Einstein, The Physics of Einstein, which enabled him to get a ground to go after being ordained in 1923 uh, to Cambridge, UK, to study astronomy and uh, also general relativity with uh, Eddington. In fact, Le Maître was also very influenced by Théophile de Donder and his first contribution in physics was uh, in the field of variational uh, calculus. And this is uh, Eddington, and in 1923, uh, he joined Eddington in order to uh, become a specialist of uh, astronomy, and uh, especially uh, he became a specialist of uh, Cepheids, these variable uh, stars. In uh, 1924, he went to the MIT and Harvard College Observatory in order to complete a PhD thesis in physics. And at the suggestion of uh, Eddington, his PhD thesis, you see here the first page of his PhD thesis conserved in, uh, in Louvain, uh, under a suggestion of Eddington, he uh, studied, in fact, in the framework of general relativity, the gravitational field inside uh, a sphere, a star, if you want, filled with an isotropic but inhomogeneous fluid. And he discovered some particular solutions of Einstein equation corresponding to two very special models. Uh, corresponding to Einstein static universe of constant density and on the other one to the empty the sitter universe both both models discovered in 1970s and this discovery in his PhD thesis uh, in fact was very important as we will uh, see in a, in a few minutes and in fact his PhD this was under the supervision of Norbert Wiener, the, the father of the kybernetics. And in fact, at the MIT, he learned many things on computers. And uh, Monsignor Lemaitre was, uh, during all his life, fascinated by computing science and uh, by uh, computers. In fact, when Lemaitre uh, came back in Belgium, uh, he was ordained in 1923. He, he went to Cambridge, UK in 1923-24, at the MIT at 25, and he came back in Belgium in uh, 1925. When he came back in Belgium, in Louvain, after visiting many important observatories in uh, the United States, for example, uh, uh, Mount Wilson Observatory and uh, Paloma Observatory, collecting a great number of 
data concerning the distance and the speed of the nebulae, this is the old name for the galaxies, he was appointed as a professor and in Louvain. This, this is a uh, photograph dating back the, the 15th in, in Louvain when he, he gave lecture uh, in the Faculty of Applied uh, Science. He, he was professor in mechanics. Uh, and in, in fact, from this year, 1925 to uh, 1964, he gave lecture on classical mechanics, on general relativity and uh, astronomy in the Faculty of Science. His main scientific work, which we shall discuss in a few minutes, led him to international recognition. And supported by Einstein himself, he received the famous uh, Frankie Prize in 1934 and many, many uh, prestigious scientific uh, awards. And in fact, his major uh, scientific contribution is dedicated to the explanation of Hubble law. You know probably that Hubble, the, this uh, American astronomer, observed that with respect to the Earth, the speed V, the speed V of the galaxies, called at this time nebulae, because galaxy uh, was a name uh, which is restricted to our Milky Way at, at this time, the, the speed V of uh, the galaxy is proportional, proportional to their distance. V is the speed of galaxies, D is the distance uh, from, uh, between the Earth and the galaxies, and we have Hubble discovered a linear proportionality between V and, and D, and this is the Hubble, what we are calling now the Hubble constant. And in fact, uh, this was completely strange at, at this time. Uh, the fact that the far galaxies recede from us according to the Hubble law is puzzling because it seems to give to the Earth a strange central position. And this, this kind of philosophical position was abandoned uh, at least since Copernicus. And in fact, all the far galaxies are receding, uh, in fact, isop isotropically with the speed proportional to the, the distance. And in fact, in 1927, this is the first important contribution of, of Lemaitre to cosmology, uh, in fact, Lemaitre explained the Hubble law. And in fact, this, uh, this is the paper, the proofs of, uh, of Lemaitre's first uh, paper. And in this uh, paper, uh, Lemaitre explained Hubble law. And this is, this is more or less the explanation of Hubble law. In a in fact, Lemaitre discovered a particular solution of Einstein uh, equation, and he discovered that one possible model of uh, the universe is a spherical uh, model with constant density of uh, galaxies. And in fact, the explanation is, is the following. Contrary to uh, everybody, everybody uh, believed at, at this time, the motion observed by Hubble, the recession, the redshift of the, the galaxies, is, not, is due not to a motion of the galaxies, but due to the motion of the universe itself. In fact, universe is in expansion and it supports the galaxies, which in fact remain fixed on the universe. It is not a motion of the galaxies, it is, if you want, a motion of the universe itself, inflating and supporting galaxies which are at rest with respect to the universe. You see, for example, here I have symbolized galaxies. You see here a galaxy at the north pole of the universe, if you want, if the universe is compared with a, with a sphere, and you see that the galaxy 
the galaxy remains fixed at the North Pole. Galaxy at the North Pole is not moving in the universe. In fact, the universe is expanding and in fact, the universe is creating space between galaxies. And it was the first contribution uh, of Georges Lemaitre. He, in fact, introduced historicity inside the universe. And, uh, in fact, th this, is, this is very uh, important. And this idea was, in fact, completely uh, refused by, uh, by uh, Einstein. In the, in the 1927 uh, paper, in fact, two years before Hubble and the publication of Hubble laws, uh, Abbé Lemaitre, uh, in fact, discovered the, the deep physical reason of the expansion of the universe and the recession, uh, the redshift of the, uh, the galaxy. But in this, in this uh, paper, in this uh, 1927 uh, paper, Lemaitre did not consider the origin of the universe. You see here, you have an exponential uh, model. E here, you have the distance between galaxies, if you want, between objects in the universe, and here you have the time. And you see here, the distance between two objects is in the past asymptotically, asymptotic to uh, a line. It means that the distance here, the distance between two objects during this period, during the past, is nearly constant. And it corresponds to the model defended, the cosmological model defended by Einstein. Einstein said, universe has to be static. And the reason is partly technical, partly due, due to his phys philosophical idea, because in fact Einstein identifies uh, in fact, as a kind of Spinozist idea, and he identified uh, the, the universe with the, the perfection, and the, the perfection Deus sive natura, in the language of uh, Spinoza, and he refused completely the, the idea of a history of the universe. Universe has no history, if you want. He has to remain static. This, this is the static universe of Einstein, and in fact, the model of uh, Georges Lemaitre uh, model has, if you want, no real physical beginning and has no physical end, if you want. Asymptotically, it tends to the De Sitter universe, and De Sitter, the Dutch astronomer, discovered in, in 1917 that, in fact, uh, in, inside the Einstein equation of gravitation, there is a model corresponding to the, uh, an empty universe without matter, but which is in fact expanding. And at this time it was puzzling because here you have a static universe which in fact is in contradiction with observation because we, we see some expansion. And here this is a model which is in contradiction with physics because it is an empty universe. And in fact Lemaitre discovered a kind of interpolation between both very great cosmologies, and this interpolation corresponds to an expanding universe, but, but without beginning and without end. Then in 1927, there is no question of, uh, of origin, if you want. In fact, uh, le, le, maître, le Maître, of course, has thought about this uh, question, deep question of origin and end of the, of the universe. And in fact, uh, during the First World War, uh, he, he wrote books of, excuse me, he wrote book of Henri Poincaré. And we have preserved in Louvain the, this book. And uh, you can uh, read here, in fact, the, the date, 1916. Uh, it was during the war. And in fact, when he was in, in uh, the trenches, Le Maître, uh, in between two, two fights, uh, in fact, read uh, Poincaré book. Uh, and in this book, uh, Poincaré uh, addressed the question to know uh, what is the 
what is the essence of, of material world? Is it, uh, is it electricity or, or is it particle or waves? Electricity and optics. Is it particle or is it waves? And in fact, uh, Lemaitre was impressed by, by this book and by this book about cosmological uh, hypothesis. And in fact, we have witnesses in his friends uh, writing uh, from the uh, trenches and especially in, in some notebooks showing that Le Maître between two battles already thought of building a cosmology based on fundamental concept of radiation. And you see here a quotation of one of his friends, uh, one uh, soldier, saying in 1917, it means before Le Maître studied general relativity. And this friend of Le Maître said, Le Maître will change all the science, he will build a powerful and wonderful cosmogony. Then at this time, Le Maître thought already to this, uh, the problem of the, uh, the origin. His intuitive and qualitative ideas received their first rigorous treatment around the 30s in the context of very hypothetical ideas of Millikan. Now, you see here in Pasadena, in uh, the Caltech, in California, you see here Millikan, Einstein, and uh, Abbé Lemaitre. And uh, in fact, uh, Lemaitre was a friend of Einstein and also a friend of Millikan, who uh, got the Nobel Prize for having measured the charge of the electron. And in fact, Le Maître was impressed by some ideas of uh, Millikan. And for example, he was impressed by a very hypothetical idea of, uh, of Millikan. And the problem addressed by Millikan was to explain the origin and nature of cosmic rays detected by balloons or mountain observatories. At this time, at the 30s, they, uh, the physicists discovered high energetical uh, radiation coming from the universe. And the problem was, uh, what is the nature of this radiation? And Millikan, Millikan assumed that these rays were in fact made of electromagnetic rays. It, it is not true. It is only partly true, but in fact, it is not true. We, we know that it is not true now. But Millikan said, well, cosmic rays are made of electromagnetic rays. And the Millikan Cameron, because Cameron was a collaborator of Millikan, hypothesis is the following. One starts from electromagnetic waves, and this can give rise to matter, proton and electron, because the neutron is not yet discovered at this time. And in fact, radiation can give rise to matter by a hypothetical process of materialization. Then, proton and electron form atoms and the mass defect energy is going out as electromagnetic radiation and this is nothing, nothing but, according to Melikan, but the high energetic cosmic rays. You see, his idea is to say, well, we have electromagnetic rays, there is some kind of hypothetical materialization process giving rise to proton and electron. This, uh, in fact, give rise to, proto to, to nuclei and the mass defect correspond to cosmic rays. It is a completely false idea, of course, because how is it possible to, to gather uh, at, a, at a place so much uh, particle in order to, to, to get uh, nuclei and so on? But, but this, this was the hypothesis of, uh, of Millikan. And in fact, this cosmic rays, this radiation, can then again give rise, gives rise to electromagnetic uh, rays. And, and then you see the, 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 the cycle uh, is, is closed. And in fact, he adopted this hypothesis in order to counter to, to, to fight against, against the Sungan uh, principle of thermodynamics. In, in fact, uh, Millikan uh, defended the, the thesis that uh, we have to suppress uh, the, the Sungan 
principle of thermodynamics at the level of, of the, the universe because he, he, he did not believe uh, in a kind of cold death of the universe. And in, in fact, he invented this theory, which is completely false. But in fact, Le Maître was very impressed by this uh, idea and he was, he, he arrives to, to the conclusion that in fact, we can think that all the matter of the universe could be generated by radiation. This is, this is a false hypothesis leading to a good intuition, if you want. But the, the, the mistake of genius are always interesting and fruitful for, for, for science. Not always, but very often. And he said the following, say in, in French, I translate, one could admit that the light, the radiation, was the original state of the matter and that all the matter condensed in star was formed by the, the process proposed by Millikan. In fact, in this, in this paper, and uh, not very uh, well known, in fact, Le Maître introduced uh, a kind of ideas concerning the origin of the matter uh, in, um, in the universe. And in fact, uh, these ideas lead us, lead him, uh, led him uh, step by step to the idea of what we call now the Big Bang Theory. But in, in fact, what, what, is, what, what is the real origin of Big Bang Theory is given by uh, this paper, this paper of, of, uh, of Eddington, and you see here the, the title, The End of the World from the Standpoint of Mathematical Physics. In, in this paper, in fact, uh, Eddington said the following thing. If the universe is expanding, then if you, if you go back to the past, then the universe is condensing. And you can reach a state where all the matter is condensed in one state. And for Eddington, this idea is repugnant. But why? He said, in this paper, he said, philosophically, the notion of a beginning of the present order of nature is repugnant to me. But why? In, in fact, Eddington, uh, um, Eddington distinguished very carefully uh, science and religious beliefs. He, he was, in fact, a Quaker, and he did not admit any connection between religious belief and description of the, of the universe, if you want. And, in fact, for him, the notion of a natural beginning described by, by physics was, in fact, identified with creation. And th this is not possible because we have to distinguish both fields. Then we have to, we, we, we have to uh, uh, put... The, in fact, we have to, to put this creation idea out of, uh, of, of physics. And this is, in fact, the, the starting point of uh, Big Bang uh, cosmology. Uh, why? Because, he, in fact, Le Maître reacted. You see, here, here the, the, the paper of, of Eddington, March 1931. And here you see... May 1931. And in fact, Le Maître reacted to this paper. And it is very interesting because, because Le Maître said, I think that such a beginning of the world is far enough from the present order of nature to be at all repugnant. And he showed in this paper that you can describe a natural beginning using physics. In fact, if you compare the universe with a balloon, an expanding balloon, if you want, uh, you, you don't need theology or metaphysics to describe a balloon, an expanding balloon. You use thermodynamics. Okay? And you can use physics to describe the, 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 the initial 
beginning of natural beginning of the universe and this is this, this idea is complete uh, from any metaphysical idea if you want and le maître it is the paradox le maître uh, who was a priest said to Ed Eddington uh, the, the Quaker well this kind of state can be described only by by physics then and maybe by a totally a completely different physics then it is not at all repugnant we can study this in in physics we could we can accept this idea inside uh, physics and this is the starting point of the primeval atom hypothesis you see here a, a page of the manuscript extracted from the archives conserved in, um, in, in Louvain. And this book is a, a book in which in 1945, in which Le Maître uh, popularized his uh, ideas and he was asked and prefaced by uh, Ferdinand Gonset, a, a famous mathematician and, and philosopher uh, in, in Switzerland. In fact, Le Maître uh, and Le Maître uh, cosmology, you, you see he, here some, some paper concerning his, his cosmology. In fact, uh, Le Maître coupled his cosmological intuitions with solution of Einstein equation that involve an initial singularity. And here you see the original drawings of, of uh, Le Maître. And in fact, he was the first who propose the idea of an initial singularity, what we are calling now the, the, the Big Bang, the birth of the space. This is an unedited um, manuscript of, of Le Maître. And you see here the first model, Eddington Le Maître's model, without beginning and without end, the model of 1927. And you see here the model of 90. 1931, with an initial singularity, with a, with a natural beginning, and you see here that the universe is accelerating. This, this kind of model is, in fact, the model uh, which is supported now by astronomical uh, observation. This is, this is, the, the, uh, this is the, the, the model which is validated by the more recent observation uh, today. And in fact, this is a, a, a model based on, on, in fact, three phases. And I have shown uh, here the, the model of Le Maître with the initial uh, singularity, with a decelerating phase, a kind of stationary phase, and a kind of accelerating phase. And this three phases uh, scenario is, in fact, the, the evolution of the universe which uh, curve, we, which is now uh, well validated by astronomical uh, data. And Le Maître proposed this in 1931 and was the first to propose initial singularity and also this accelerating phase. Which, which is due to uh, a term in the Einstein equation called the cosmological constant. In fact, Le Maître realized that in the universe you have two kinds of gravities. You have a, a, attractive gravities, the usual one, Newtonian one, but at the level of the universe you have a kind of repulsive gravity, which is modeled by the so-called cosmological term. And in fact, in fact, Einstein refused at the same time the initial singularity because Einstein said, well, it is theology. We have to refuse this idea because natural beginning is creation and I don't believe in creation. Then I don't want this in physics. But Le Maître distinguished carefully creation in the sense of theology and natural beginning described by, by, by physics. And Einstein refused also cosmological constant. He, in fact, he had introduced cosmological constant uh, in order to, have, to get his static universe, but in the second part of his life, Einstein rejected completely the cosmological constant. He said, it, it is not very aesthetic, it is too much in my equation, 
this constant has no real geometrical interpretation uh, and we have to expulse this constant. And in fact, Lemaitre was the first who proposed that this term, which is responsible to the accelerating phase, in fact, we are now here, more or less here in the accelerating phase, and Lemaitre said, well, this term, this repulsive gravity is due to some quantum physics. And he proposed that cosmological constant is in fact the trace of quantum uh, mechanism. And in fact, uh, he's, this, this idea is, is, is true because uh, physicists now uh, are thinking that this cosmological term has something to do with uh, uh, quantum field theory or quantum physics. Okay, in fact, in this picture, you see that uh, Lemaitre in the 1931 has nearly all the good ideas of the more recent cosmology. And we can here see uh, here the Lemaitre's idea with the more recent ideas of cosmology. You see here, he, he has the idea of expansion and he explained Hubble law two years before Hubble, in fact, because Hubble published in 1929 and he discovered the, uh, his explanation in 1927. Then he had this idea of expansion of the universe and the idea of historicity of the universe itself. He had the idea of re-acceleration or acceleration of the universe. And all the observation now show us that we are now in an accelerating phase. And this is due cosmological constant. And he pretend that this constant is very important. And now we know that it is because one of the major problems for theoretical physics now is what we, we call, we are calling the dark energy. And the dark energy is precisely the energy which is described by cosmological constant and responsible to the accelerating phase. He had the idea of initial singularity, Big Bang. Of course, he did not use the term Big Bang because Big Bang was a joke. It was a joke invented by Fred Hoyle. Fred Hoyle was a friend of, of Lemaitre but at the level of, of the ideas, he was an enemy. Because Hoyle, in fact, did not support, did, did not refuse completely the idea of initial singularity. Why? Always the same reason. Hoyle was convinced that initial singularity is the theological creation. It is the same idea uh, you can find in, in Einstein's uh, ideas. This is the same idea you can, you, you can find in Hawking's book. And the more recent book proved that this confusion between creation conceived metaphysically or theologically and natural beginning described by, by, uh, by the physics. And Fred Hoyle cannot accept this idea. And during a BBC broadcast, he invented this term of Big Bang. And in order to, to make a joke, he said, well, this is the Big Bang cosmology. And in fact, I, I learned uh, by um, a collaborator of Georges Lemaitre, Odon Godard, said to me that when uh, Monseigneur Lemaitre entered some, some uh, assembly, some uh, meeting uh, of astronomers in, in the beginning of the 16th, the young generation of astrophysicists uh, in fact, sometimes said, well, this is the Big Bang Man, and everybody recognized Monseigneur Le Maître, this is the Big Bang Man. And it was a joke, and it is, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> it is uh, good now to realize that this, this joke is now the standard term to, uh, to characterize this uh, cosmology um, of Le Maître. Uh, Le Maître uh, used the term uh, initial firework. This is his, his term. And in fact, he estimated the age of the universe uh, at the order of, 
of a billion years. And in fact, we know now that an estimation is between 13 and, and 15 years. And he, he had also the idea of a fossil radiation. He said, well, if, if all the matter was condensed in a, in, in a kind of quanta, unique quantum, then if the universe is uh, expanding, then maybe we have to observe now some fossils of the first moment of the universe. And he was the first to propose this kind of uh, fossil radiation idea. And in fact, he had, he had also some very nice ideas on the formation of large structure like cluster of galaxies and galaxies and, and so on, doesn't uh, matter. But of course, of course, he had the ideas, but not not com but he had not completely right. For example, he had this idea of fossil radiation, but he believed that fossil radiation was in fact, were in fact cosmic rays. And we know uh, now that this fossil ra radiation is electromagnetic wave. This is the cosmological microwave background, uh, which was discovered by Penzias and Wilson in 1965. And in fact, Le Maître, Le Maître uh, discovered this. Uh, one of his collaborators uh, went to the hospital uh, because Le, Le Maître uh, died in 1966, but in 1965 he was, he, he was in, the, in the hospital in, in Louvain. And his collaborator, Godard, uh, went to the hospital and said to Monseigneur Le Maître, I have a good news for you we have finally discovered the fossil radiation. And uh, Godard said to me that Monseigneur Le Maître was at the same time very happy and very sad. He was very happy because effectively this is the discovery of fossil radiation, but he, he was very sad because the nature of fossil ra radiation uh, was not cosmic rays. And in fact, Le Maître for all these ideas, Le Maître uh, could, could have received Nobel Prize in 1978 because this prize was given to Penzias and Wilson and he could have received the Nobel Prize in 2006 because Smoot and Matter, in fact, received the Nobel Prize for having, uh, in fact, studied carefully the cosmic uh, microwave background uh, radiation, giving some observa observational support to the ideas of Le Maître. But in fact, in 1966, at the moment of, the, uh, of Le Maître's death, these observations uh, were not yet well uh, accepted. In fact, Chandra Sekar, the famous astronomer, proposed Le Maître, proposed the name of Le Maître for the Nobel Prize. But at this time, in the 15th and the, the beginning of the 16th, observations were unfortunately not there. But in fact, now nearly everybody uh, accepted that in fact, if he had uh, been in, alive in, in 1978, and it could have been possible, uh, in fact, he, he had he, he should, he, yes, he had received the, the Nobel Prize. In, in fact, this is, this is the a picture of the cosmic microwave background radiation, the fossil radiation, and, and you see here the evolution of the precision of the observation. Uh, in fact, this, this is a, a radiation at uh, 2.7 uh, Kelvin, uh, the degree, uh, this is not uh, very, very high, and the, all the fluctuations are, are in fact corresponds to the germ, the germs of, uh, of the galaxies and the large uh, structure. But th this is very, very thin uh, fluctuation. Uh, the order of the fluctuation, the temperature of fluctuation is uh, 10 to the power minus uh, 5. But this is the proof uh, of uh, a Big Bang uh, cosmology, if you want. And here you see graphs, in fact, computed by Le Maître, 
because in fact uh, Le Maître was persuaded that in fact believed that fossil radiation was cosmic rays. Then he studied carefully the orbits of charged particles in geomagnetic field. And in fact, he produced with this machine, this is the Vannevar Bush machine at the MIT. The, uh, at the MIT in the 30s, uh, Wiener, Wiener and, uh, and some other uh, engineers like uh, Vannevar Bush invented an uh, electromagnetic uh, computing machine and Le Maître used this machine in order to compute thousands and thousands uh, orbits of, some, uh, of such charged particles. And in fact, he studied what we call now the, storm, the Sturmer problem, which in fact corresponds to the theory of uh, Boreal Aurora, and in fact, and Van Allen uh, Belt. And in fact, Le Maître made very important contribution to Van, uh, to, uh, uh, Van Allen Belt and to the Sturmer uh, problem. And uh, in fact, he uh, wrote many papers on this subject. And this is very interesting because, in fact, Le Maître was not a speculative uh, physicist. He was, uh, in fact, he, he, he knew very well general relativity, but he, 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 he was, he, he, yes, he, he has a great attention to observational data. And for example, the, to the measure of intensity of uh, cosmic, cosmic radiation and produced many papers uh, with, uh, with Chinese. And why with Chinese? Because Le Maître was a, a very kind person. And in the 30s, he was the, the first person in Louvain who contributed to uh, welcome the Chinese students. And during his seminar, I have said that during his seminar, he received the permission to learn general relativity. Then he attended course of theology, of philosophy, but he studied general relativity and he also studied Chinese language. And he was able to, to read and to, to speak in, in uh, Chinese language. You, you see here the name of Le Maître in, in, a, in a special form of Chinese language. And he had many Chinese uh, students and with the Chinese students he computed many orbits of charged particles. And you see here an example of his fascination for computing machine. This is the first computer in the University of Louvain introduced in 1958. And Le Maître, uh, Le Maître by this computer, and in fact, he programmed, he programmed himself this computer and invented a language which is very near Fortran uh, language and he programmed and computed many things about cosmic rays, about large scale structure cluster of galaxies using this, this computer. And you see here one sheet of paper used by Le Maître uh, in order to, to study, in fact, the cluster, AMA, cluster of, uh, of galaxies. And, but, but this computer has the power of a, a, a pocket computer. If you, if you have a little pocket computer, this is, this is equivalent to this, to this machine. And you see here some boxes corresponding to one step of the program. If, uh, if you, you have here some, uh, some pins and corresponding to instruction, and, and you put the pins uh, inside the, the box, and for example, if you want to compute uh, exponential function or sine function, you, you have to, to choose a, a special box and put it on the machine and, th and this is a mechanical uh, programming if you want. And Le Maître uh, appreciated very much this kind of uh, programming and during all his life he uh, collect many, many mechanical, electromagnetic and electronic uh, uh, computers and we can say that he, he was uh, one of the first programmers in Europe. And he invented many, many numerical techniques known, uh, which are uh, well known now in, uh, in uh, engineering science. And for example, the fast Fourier transform. In fact, in the 50s, uh, before Cooley and Toke, he invented the fast Fourier transform. And this is uh, impressive 
because this technique is in fact the, the historian of mathematics said that the in, invention of fast Fourier transform in fact dates back to Gauss uh, astronomical computation but in fact this technique was in fact invented by Cooley and Tucky in the 70s and in fact in the lectures uh, in the, the notebooks of Lemaitre uh, in the 15, you, you, you can find, you can find uh, fast Fourier transform. But Georges Lemaitre was a very modest person and he refused to publish his uh, ideas and uh, this is the reason why uh, Lemaitre is not well known. And in fact he was fascinated by the way a, m a machine is working and he decided to propose to children to, uh, to use a new arithmetics with new symbols in, in order to compute like a machine. And he was persuaded that uh, it was a good thing. And, and you see, this is a, a new notation of, of the figure based on the fact that if you see, if you look at the, 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 the picture here, you, you have to, to know immediately what what the, the figure is, to, to, what, uh, to what things correspond to, 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 the, to, to the figure. For example, in Latin, uh, in the, the, the Latin figure, you, you see the one, two, three, you see immediately uh, the amount corresponding to the, the figure. And this was the idea of, of, of Le Maire. But it was not a good idea, but in fact now, uh, specialists in neurophysiology and, and cognitive psychology uh, in fact are interested uh, in, in this paper because it corresponds to um, researches uh, to, in fact these researches correspond to a way to be adequate to the brain if you want we are searching a way to represent mathematics which is more adequate to brain functioning and for example, at the Collège de France, Stanislas de Haan, uh, which is a, one of the best specialists of, of uh, uh, neurophysiology and neurophysiology of computation process, in fact, his researches uh, are connected uh, with this kind of uh, interest. Okay, Le, Le, Maître, Le Maître was a, a great scientist friend of Einstein and here is Hubble, but he was also a priest and I want to, to, uh, to finish saying this. In fact, uh, Le Maître uh, had a very deep spiritual life. Uh, in 1994, we discovered in archives that in fact, uh, Le Maître belonged to a sacerdotal fraternity in which some priest of the Malin diocese pronounce vow, vows of religious life, if you want. And in fact, Le Maître uh, pronounced vow of poverty. And I remember uh, one member of uh, Le Maître's family asked me, uh, could you solve an enigma, a mystery in the life of our uh, parent? Where is the money of all the prizes he received. And he, in fact, it was a mystery because this money uh, vanished somewhere. And in fact, the reason is simple. In 1994, we, we said, and I don't know if you, if you can uh, read here, Vota Pauperitatis. And in fact, you, you, you see here the verse, uh, Votum, uh, Vota pauperitatis, vota uh, casti, uh, castitatis, uh, and so on. Okay? And here you have an additional uh, vote, votum immolationis. It is a kind of uh, special vote in this, uh, in this uh, community, in this fraternity of, of, of priests, to, uh, uh, we, which is the, the offering of his person to the Christ. And you see that. In fact, Le Maire, this is the column of uh, Vota Popperitatis here. Popperitatis here, you see the signature of Georges Le Maire. Then he pronounced these words and he pronounced also these words. In, in fact, in this uh, fraternity founded by Cardinal Mercier, 
In this fraternity, uh, priest, uh, diocesan priest, in, in fact, um, did one hour worship after their mass uh, each day. And in fact, Le Maître was a faithful member of this uh, fraternity. But he was very, uh, very modest and he, he said very often, I have followed two paths to truth. And I have discovered in, in his retreat pad, because inside this sacerdotal fraternity, the, the members um, are obliged to, to do a kind of a completely silent, uh, silent retreat each year. Ten, year, ten, ten, day, ten days uh, completely silent retreat. And I have discovered in one of his pad, a retreat pad, this, this thing. And this is, if you are a scientist, even in retreat, uh, you have some scientific ideas and, okay, this is, this is the Le Maître model. And it, it dates back the, 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 the end of the 50, of the 50. And here you see a, a text. Uh, maybe you, you, can, you cannot translate it because it is in whole Dutch. And in fact, this is re, the retranscription of a Flemish mystic called Reusbroek. This, is, this, is, this mystic who influenced the Renan uh, mystics. And in fact, Georges Lemaitre was uh, influenced by, by this, the, the writings of these mystics. And he translated, you see here, communion, communion, communion and, uh, and he uh, studied very carefully and meditated text of, uh, on the Holy Communion of uh, Reusbroek. And it was a kind of characteristic of, of, uh, of Georges Lemaitre. He was a, a very uh, good scientist, friend of Einstein, but he, he was also a very spiritual uh, priest. And maybe we have to rediscover this personality. And the reason why he, he is still um, less unknown in some uh, countries is partly to the fact that at the moment of his death, all the observations validating uh, his idea were not there, partly because Le Maître was a very modest guy, and in fact, when he gave lectures, he said, this is the Friedman, this is the Friedman curve. And in fact, he, he, in, in fact it was his curve, but he refused to, to, to call this Le Maître's curve. He said always, no, no, this is Friedman, uh, an herbal result, and very modest. No marketing, no publicity, uh, and so on. Then he is still not, not well known. And the third reason is, in fact, because he was a priest, nearly everybody, beginning by Einstein, believed that he confused creation and beginning. And during all his life, Le Maître tried to recall <coughs> what, he, what he has learned in St. Thomas Aquinas in uh, prima pars of the Summa uh, Theology, the, where Thomas Aquinas distinguished very carefully uh, creation and, and beginning. And he said, well, we have to distinguish. Uh, there is a connection between, of course, of course, this concept and, 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 and creation. But first of all, we have to epistemologically distinguish the, the level. And uh, in fact, he methodologically separate, separate, uh, separated the, the, the domain, the fields, but in fact he said, uh, I have thought about the unity. But he said, the unity is given by the action of the scientist. In fact, my religious uh, witness, if you want, is given by the fact that I am a priest and I am also a scientist. I'm not a philosopher, I'm not a theologian, but my personal uh, belief is not expressed in conceptual term, but everybody can understand the witness seeing here a man with a Roman collar. Right? And he said, this is my witness. I'm not a philosopher, I'm not a theologian, I'm a priest acting, like, uh, acting as 
uh, a mathematician as a physicist. And this is nice because, in fact, he, he gives a, a kind of way of, of thinking of science and, and faith problem. Uh, in fact, it is in the in a concrete action that science and, and, and religion are, in fact, unified. It is not necessarily in conceptual, at a conceptual level, but uh, in the unity of a person. And uh, it is a, a very nice uh, message, in fact, uh, given by Le Maître. And this can avoid uh, many problems we, we encounter now in the literature concerning science and faith. And it is, it is very sad that, in fact, in book uh, of great astrophysicists and cosmologists like Hawking, we, we can uh, still now discover some kind of uh, poor mixing between uh, theological concept and, and physical uh, concept. And uh, Le Maître uh, gave us a, a kind of very nice um, message by his work and also by his uh, life. Thank you very much. For that because it was because at that time it was very unclear the nature of the cosmic rays. And mm -hmm. in fact, Miracle himself mm -hmm. made many mistakes. There yes. was a expedition in which he wanted to show there is no latitude effect and it was a latitude effect. Yes, yes. So, You're right. So this is important. And, uh, and but when you refer to the possibility that, that the veteran would get the Nobel Prize for that, I was thinking that there was another man who I believe would deserve more the Nobel Prize for predicting nothing. And that was George Gabo. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Russian, yes, yes. Precisely yes, the yes. way the Big Bang was, I mean, the yes. first Big Bang calculation was predicted in the 40s, mm -hmm. and in fact, made some calculations with somebody else, I forgot the name. Mm -hmm. And in fact, he, he was totally orthodox. He was really the face the, the yes. of, the, of, the, of the cosmic Big Bang radiation discovered in the mm -hmm. 60s. And he never got the Nobel Prize either. Yes, yes. In fact, he died. He was professor in Wooden for a long time. Yes. And he died long ago. Yes, thank you, thank you very much for, for uh, your, your comments. It, it is true, in fact, um, if, if you think about Big Bang Theory, they, they are in fact two fathers. And one is Le Maître, and the other one, effectively, indeed, is uh, George Gamow. And in fact, uh, George Gamow uh, gave the nuclear physics part of the primeval atom contribution. And with two students, with Teller, Teller and Meyer, they described, uh, in fact, the primeval atom as a kind of what they call polyneutrons, a set of neutrons, and by beta decays and produce helium and so on. And in fact, in uh, the Solvay conference in 1958, in fact, some students of, of Gamow uh, were there and tried to explain to, to Le Maître uh, this result. But in fact, the problem, and this is, thank you to, to have made this comment, because in fact, uh, Le Maître was not trained as a, a nuclear physicist. He, he was a good astronomer, he, he, he knew very well general relativity, but in fact, he, he knew nearly nothing in nuclear physics and, and uh, quantum field theory, for example, after the war. And he refused to enter in this kind of, of field, and he said many times, well, nuclear physics is entomology. It's a collection of butterflies, and, <laughs> and okay, and he referred, and this, this is uh, maybe a little bit sad, but you, you've completely right. Uh, in fact, Big Bang theory uh, has two, two fathers, and they uh, de deserve uh, both n Nobel Prize. The other day, in nature, um, this article came out when they they sort of tried to trace the, the discoveries of, of of George and how, and for some reason, anecdotally, he took out like two paragraphs from his original manuscript when he sent it to, to the Royal Society in Britain. Ah, yes. When it was published posteriorly in thirty one. Yes. I don't know what for what reason, but perhaps you can you can give us some some yes. for that. And secondly. Um, how do you manage, how does a scientist manage to uh, combine religion and science? Because right now, for example, they're like very polarized. But for example, George 
I guess in his life, how did how did reflect? Oh, yes. I mentioned his, his religiosity, his piety. How did it reflect in science? Because hmm? we see now from the retreat that he has been taking notes on physics. But probably his approach to the science, how was it? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. The, the, the first part, uh, there, there was a, co a kind of controversy starting in the, the Cambridge co conference in, in, in April. And uh, Effectively, uh, we, we knew that, in fact, some part of the, 20, the 1927 paper uh, written in, in French disappeared in, in, the, the, in the translation, English translation. And, um, and some historians and some physicists, Nussbaum, Bloch, and so on, uh, made, made the conjecture that, in fact, Hubble, Hubble uh, played a not very good role uh, in, in order to preserve his priority. But in fact, the, the controversy was interesting because it stressed that effectively Lemaitre discovered the uh, computed the Hubble constant two years before Hubble. But in fact, Hubble played no role, in fact, in the a translation process. Why? Because, in fact, in, in Louvain, we, we have some, some letters, and they discovered letters in, in, in London, in the archives, showing that, in fact, Le Maître translated himself his paper. Of course, he, he, he knew English very well, and he translated his, his paper himself. Then, in fact, Le Maître himself extracted some part. Why? It corresponds completely to the Hubble constant. But what's the reason? In fact, remember that Lemaitre was uh, very careful to the, to the observations. And he based his paper, his 1927 paper, on a catalog of galaxies, the Stromberg catalog, uh, which dates back the, 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 be, the, the beginning of, of the 20s, 40, around 40 uh, yes, 40 uh, galaxies. And in fact, in 31, this catalog was not up to date. And if, if, you, see, if you see the data of, used by Lemaitre, it is impressive. He, he derived a linear proportionality. Uh, yes, he derived the Hubble law. But if you see the data, it, it's nearly impossible to derive a linear Law. And, and the proof that, in, in fact, he has thought about another title. He, in, the title is uh, a, a universe with variable, with, with, um, with uh, expanding uh, uh, radius. But in the, in the initial manuscript, it was uh, a universe with variable radius. It means expanding and, and contracting. Then, in fact, in, in 1931, he realized that, in fact, his astronomical data were not up to date. And I think this is, this is the reason. There, were, there, there, there was no censorship and no pressure. Because, in fact, Le Maitre was very, uh, very free from any influence. I, I, give, you, I give you an, an example. He, he attended uh, lectures of Rutherford in Cambridge. And uh, Otterford was impressive and, and so on. And he saw in, in, in the public, he, he saw Le Maître. And uh, he said, well, it is a great pleasure to, to have a, a, a student, a, a priest in my audience. And, uh, and he asked him the question to, to know, why are you there? Is it to learn uh, my... Uh, and he immediately answered, no, no, excuse me, I'm here only to improve my English. You see, he's, it is impossible to, to influence him. And in fact, Le Maitre was very free. And I, I, I don't believe that. Uh, the, it is true that Hubble was very careful to his priority. And we can say in his history that he has tried to preserve his priority, for example, in the classification of the galaxies. Uh, it is true. But in fact, I think it played no role in this question. This is the first part, okay? Uh, and the controversy is nearly over now. 
if you have uh, read uh, the last issue of, of, of Nature, uh, article of paper of Livio, I, I think. Uh, the, the third part, in, in his life, in, in, in his laboratory, in fact, uh, Georges Lemaitre was very careful to, to distinguish the, the, the fields, if you want. When he, he was giving lect lecture about uh, his primeval atom hypothesis uh, and so on. Of course, some students in, in Louvain uh, and in the audience, uh, they, 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 they were, they were many uh, ecclesiastical persons and, and so on in Louvain, uh, Catholic University of Louvain. And many students asked him the question, well, uh, uh, Monsignor, what's, what's the relation between your theory and uh, theology of creation? And Monsignor Lemaitre was always uh, very careful and said, no, no, it is physics, it is not theology, we, we have to, to distinguish, pay attention. And why? Because he said, I have um, too much respect for God to transform him into a scientific, only into a scientific hypothesis. And he hate completely the, the sentence of Laplace, of genes, the, the, the chic note of Laplace, the, this kind of impulse. Uh, uh, when Napoleon, Napoleon met Laplace and said, well, in, in your system, where is God? And, and uh, Laplace said, uh, excuse me, see, I, I, I don't need this hypothesis, except at the beginning, to, to give an impulsion. And uh, Le Maître, hate this kind of sentence. And he, he refused uh, also this famous sentence of genes, the astrophysic, English astrophysicist, saying the figure, the finger of God agitating the ether and to, to give the impulsion and so on. And he refused completely. And this is the reason why in his lecture he said, well, no, we have to, to distinguish. This is physics, this is not uh, theology. But, but, uh, you, you asked me the question, how is kind of religious witness? In, in fact, in, in his lab, he respect the, 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 the convictions of all his assistants and, 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 and students. And, but he, he said, uh, my, presence, my presence as a priest uh, is my witness, if you want. He, in fact, he has made some apostolic work uh, amongst the, the Chinese. He, 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 he was uh, the, the priest responsible of the Chinese house in, in uh, Louvain in the 30s. And, and then he, he did some apostolic work. And, uh, but in, in fact, he, he said, my, my role is not to, uh, to make some predication uh, in the lab. No, because he he refused to confuse, but he, he said, well, uh, everybody, everybody uh, knows that I am a priest. They, they are knowing my, my deep conviction and my presence is uh, sufficient. It, it is a way to, to, to be a Christian and a priest in, in a scientific um, sphere. And in fact, I realize now that in fact, it is, it is very good because when, when you are speaking about Le Maître in, in, every, in every sphere, in, in a scientific community, scientific conference, you, you, you show this and the first question is, uh, uh, how is it possible to be a priest and also a friend of Einstein? <laughs> it is a, uh, Le, Le Maître... Uh, the man did, did, did not say anything, but uh, the, 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 the questions uh, arose, if you want. I don't know if this is in first approximation what I can say. diferentes, como puede ser el propio Galileo, quien también pensaba 
que la religión y la ciencia eran cosas, ámbitos diferentes, y lo defendía públicamente. Y solían decir que eh, la religión no te dice cómo funcionan los cielos, en todo caso, cómo funcionan los cielos. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And in, in this paper, in, in this paper uh, precisely, he referred to Galileo. Yes, yes, in this interview of, of 1933. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, because vamos a acabar ya aquí quizá hay tiempo para preguntarle personalmente pero simplemente darle las gracias al profesor Lambert por esta conferencia por habernos familiarizado con un personaje tan importante para la ciencia del siglo XX y que sigamos disfrutando de esta semana de la ciencia vamos a agradecer de nuevo a todos